Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here once again for String Tech Workstation, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. We've got two Martin D28s in. One needs a neck reset, the other one doesn't. I thought I would take this opportunity to have two side by side. So this is Rodney's D28 and this is Andrew's D28. So you can see that there isn't much real estate left on that saddle to go down any further. And with this guitar the action is quite high needs to come down quite a bit so this guitar does need a neck reset room although the action is higher than he likes there's enough real estate left in that saddle for us to bring it down so he does not need a neck reset I'm cutting some narrow string ramps at the leading edge of the bridge pin holes to increase the tension at the focal point on the saddle There's our 7th fret, and this is the initial tuning check, so I have not done anything to the saddle. All the focal points are adjusted from Martin, so this is basically stock saddle. Play that open string, and the 12th fret. Oh, it's a little flat. Okay, here's the 7th fret. That's also flat. Now there's lots of room on that saddle to come forward. At this point, we're not in need of a cantilevered saddle, but let's make our way across and check the rest of the string. Here's our fifth string and octave. Good. Seventh fret. Oh, it's a little flat. That's not bad. Here's our fourth string and octave. Perfect. Good. Okay, so that's four cents flat. Mmm, yeah, that's it. we don't have a lot of room there. We'll, we'll continue with the rest of the strings first. We'll get back to that. Third. And octave. A little tiny bit flat. And octave. Okay, seven cents flat. Yeah, we're going to need to cantilever that saddle. There's no way around it. I wanted to go through the motions first, just show you the stock saddle, and justify why I'm going to the extent to make a cantilevered compensated saddle. Okay, next string. And octave. That's pretty good. And yeah, four cents flat. There's our first string and octave. Well, it must have been a lot sharper before I dropped that saddle down. It's, it's perfect now. Seventh fret. A little tiny bit flat. Yeah. yeah, it's like four cents flat. So we are going to do a cantilever compensated saddle. We still have a little bit of room to drop that down. Now this guitar is fine. I mean, those other three Martins, they all needed neck resets. The neck had to come off. There was no way around it. This one is borderline. It's good right now. It won't be too many years down the road where we'll be looking at a neck reset on this one right now. But that can take a back seat for now. We'll get this thing perfectly in tune, smooth as silk, without pulling the neck off. So the other thing you need to keep in mind is that ledge all the way across, it needs to clear the top of the bridge. There's a pickup in this guitar. You've got to make sure the overhang doesn't get hung up on the ledge of the slot. So you've got to take a real close look at that. So back to the radius sander. So what I've done here is I've skimmed off these top frets so that we can drop the action down without getting any rattling and buzzing. Ultimately a neck reset is in the mix but this is going to buy the customer five to seven years you know before we have to go to that extent. If I put that straight edge on the saddle at the sixth string that's pretty presentable action. It's going to pull up a little bit because there's no string tension on but 
No, this is going to make a huge difference for the playability. So the natural height of the Martin fret, standard Martin fret, is about 42 thou. This has been brought down to 38 thou, so it's not a huge difference, but it's going to make a huge difference for the customer's pocketbook. Um, as you know, I just did three Martin Necro sets yesterday, and there was no choice on those three. All of those necks needed to come off and be reset. This is kind of borderline, so I know Rod is a working musician and he's just getting up and running this may buy him five seven years more of playing before he has to go to the extent of a complete neck reset Yeah, you can see all the activity is right here, the fingerboard extension. That's why you do a neck reset. So I've come around the other side. I'm going from the top of the radius, center of the fingerboard, to the outside edge. With the crowning file, being careful not to touch the center of the crown. So it's really the top end that needs the uh, attention. I will go full length when I switch over to the 600. So all the tooling marks of the file are taken out with a 320 grit. I have three pieces of 600 grit stacked on my uh, scrub block. And now with the 600 we're going to go full length. Just concentrate on that top end first. Second piece of 600. Third piece of 600. This is a 1200 grit. This is a real tough block back here. And that'll get us ready for the buffer. Okay, final buff. So this is the wrap up on Rod's uh, D28. We did manage to sort of squeak by without doing a neck reset. We got that action down for the 12 to 53 at concert pitch. It plays beautifully, silky smooth. We put the compensated cantilevered saddle in. I'll show you in a second on the tuner. You'll just see how accurate this is. Now at the other end, this is where we ended up with the compensated nut. As you can see, the A and D strings were moved forward. The G just a little bit. The B also forward and the high E as well just slightly forward. The low E ended up pr pretty close to its original position at the end of the fingerboard. So level recrowning and buffing out those frets to about the 12th or 11th fret has allowed us to drop that action down nice and close and this is going to buy the customer at least five maybe seven years of playing uh, before he'll be in for the inevitable neck reset.
And now the other thing that I did was the battery bag was actually stuck to the back of the guitar. So I relocated it to where I normally put it, which is on the edge of the head block. So I put the 3M strip of Velcro on the edge of the head block. Now the reason I do that is because you kind of got gravity working for you. So when you got the battery bag and it's sitting on the head block, when you're playing your guitar, the adhesive that sticks to the head block has less to do with support than, than the actual solid mahogany block where the neck attaches. So it's just sitting on a ledge, the edge of the actual mahogany head block and I release that wire so there's plenty for Rod to kind of to reach into the sound hole when he's changing strings, pull out, change the battery and then stick it back in place. So let's do our tuning test and you, we can see just how accurate this guitar is. Just tape that leather strap down so it doesn't mute the string. So here we go, here's our proverbial tuning test. We'll start with the 7th fret and corresponding octave on the 6th string. string, octave, 12th fret, open, and 1st fret note, and the D string, octave, 12th fret, open, and 1st fret, and here is the 3rd. B string, first string, I will plug this in in a second, you can kind of hear the system, but really this guitar is not about the system, it's about the acoustic voice of this guitar. Beautiful.
So I'll let that looped progression in A just kind of play and I'll just experiment on different parts of the neck playing along with it. Thank you. 